You were able to say whether it was true or not. I heard it many years ago of a household that has a night guard, like many houses have night guard. And early in the morning, the night guard, before closing, went to the owner of the house, the boss who employed him. Sir, God has sent me to you. I want to be careful. In the night, I had a dream. And he recounted the dream to the boss and said, so you need to pray, oh, if necessary, fast, because danger is lurking in the corner. And God has shown it to me. And the boss said, thank you very much. But from today, you are fired. <laughs> boss, what did I do? How did you dream? You were supposed to be awake. You were sleeping. So the night guard that was supposed to be awake slept and dreamt. And so he was sacked. So we are talking about dreams today. And I pray you will not sleep. Amen. Tell your neighbor, don't sleep. Don't sleep. So as has been announced, we'll be sharing on the theme, Realizing Your Dream today by the grace of God and the next two Tuesdays making it a three part serial and I was wondering how when I told the pastor that that is the theme that was laid in my heart I didn't tell him the scripture I didn't tell him anything but he kept on announcing about Joseph I said what if I decided not to <laughs> preach using Joseph but uh, let's clap for our pastor because he is in the spirit Genesis chapter 37, we read from verse 1. Genesis chapter 37 from verse 1. Genesis chapter 37 from verse 1. Realizing your dream. Now Jacob dwelt in the land where his father was, a stranger, in the land of Canaan. This is the history of Jacob. Joseph, being 17 years old, was feeding the flock with his brothers. And the lad was with the sons of Bela and the sons of Zilpah, his father's wives. And Joseph brought a bad report of them to his father. Now Israel loved Joseph more than all his children, because he was the son of his old age. Also, he made him a tunic of many colors. But when his brothers saw that their father loved him more than all his brothers, they hated him and could not speak peaceably to him. Now Joseph had a dream, and he told it to his brothers, and they hated him even more. So he said to them, please hear this dream, which I have dreamed. There we were, binding sheaves in the field. Then behold, my sheaf arose, and also stood upright, and indeed your sheaves stood all around, and bowed down to my sheaf. And his brother said to him, shall you indeed reign over us? Or shall you indeed have dominion over us? So they hated it even more for his dreams and for his words. Then he dreamed still another dream and told it to his brothers and said, Look, I have dreamed another dream. And this time the sun, the moon, and the eleven stars bowed down to me. So he told it to his father and his brothers. And his father rebuked him and said to him, What is the dream that you have dreamed? Shall your mother and I and your brothers indeed come to bow down to the earth before you? And his brothers envied him, but his father kept the matter in mind. May the Lord bless his words into our hearts. In Jesus' name. Many of us are familiar with this story of Joseph, who was the eleventh of the twelve sons of Jacob. And Jacob was the one whose name was changed to Israel. Abraham gave birth to Isaac. Isaac gave back to Jacob. Jacob gave back to 12 sons. Joseph was number 11 out of 12 sons. And so we see him. He was young. The Bible said he was 17 years old. That's why I encourage the young people should be here today. He was 17 years old when he had this encounter. Most of us here are above 17. 
Apart from Alfie, are you 17 yet? Not only was he young, the Bible says in verse 2, he was feeding the flock with his brothers. He was useful and available for his parents. There are many young people who just laze around, who are not serving their earthly, biological parents, who are also not serving God. Here, when you see the Old Testament, when we talk about a father, you can juxtapose it with a, the Heavenly Father. So he was not only young, he was busy serving God, serving his father. And he was loved and favored. Out of 12 sons, the father loved him and preferred him to the others. That is a subject for another day, but that is something that is unwise for those of us who are uh, parents, because that can engender envy as the other children could envy the uh, favored one. So the father, out of all the 12 children, made for him a tunic, a coat of many colors. Look at your dress. Please look at yourself. Don't you look beautiful? You are not looking at yourself. Look at your dress. Don't you look beautiful? Tell God, God, I thank you for my coat of many colors. I'm beautifully and fearfully made. Great is your work in me. So he was envied. Not only was he loved and favored, the Bible says he was envied and hated. So brethren, favor is not fair. If you are praying for God to favor you, it means some people may take the short end of the stick. You are in an office, and out of four people qualified, you are singular for promotion, you are favored. Then you could be the object of envy of the others. In a class, out of 30 students, you had the best result, you had 85 over 100, the next person to you had 70. They would say, what's wrong with this woman? What's wrong with this man? What's wrong with this boy? What's wrong with this girl? So, favor of necessity attracts envy. And if it is only envy that attracts, count yourself blessed. In this case, not only did it attract envy, it have attracted hatred. Blood brothers, not only envy, the, the Bible said they hated him. Verse 4. But when his brothers saw that their father loved him more than all his brothers, they hated him and could not speak peaceably to him. So, he had dreams at a young age. The first dream was that Shiv, Shiv those of you who, have, who are not raised in the farm will not understand this, is when you harvest maybe corn or wheat, they are in strands, maybe three feet, four feet tall, and then you tie them together, maybe 50, sheaf, 50 strands, that's a sheaf. So they were all on the farm in his dream, and they were tying the harvest together, so they would know this is the one, Brother Femi Joseph. Oh, you are also Joseph. You are favored in the name of Jesus. This is Femi Joseph's sheaf. This is uh, Kende Olajire's sheaf. And he said, out of 12 sheaves, all the 11 sheaves bowed down to him, which signified that the 11 brothers will bow down to him. He will reign. And he was, don't forget, he was number 11. If it was the first, I mean, Jewish custom, that's okay. They receive a double portion. But number 11, last but one, <laughs> everybody, including old brother, bowing before him. The second dream was that the sun and the moon were bowing before him. That is the father and the mother. So, what is a dream? Literally, you have a dream while you are asleep. It is a set of thoughts and images and sensations occurring in a person's mind during sleep. If you have dreamt before, can you raise up your hand? 
most of us should have. You sleep and you dream. That is one aspect of dream. The second aspect is why you are awake. The first is why you are asleep. The second is why you are awake. It is a cherished ambition, aspiration or ideal, something that it's in your mind you want to accomplish, you want to achieve, you want to attain. That may be a dream. You are not sleeping. You are waking up. You are saying, oh, five years time, I wish I was here. Ten years time, I wish I was there. I can imagine myself sitting down in my office uh, with a computer, finishing the uh, office time, going in my car, returning home getting home, sitting at the table with my husband, with my wife, with my children, you have a dream, an aspiration, an ambition, an ideal that you want for yourself in the future. These are two aspects of a dream, but we are not considering this today. We are considering a dream that is a vision, and there is a lot of difference between the literal dream and vision. So what we want to talk about this series is really vision, but it can be described as dream, but make sure you understand that it's not the dream you have after taking plenty of jollof rice and chicken. Because the Bible says a dream comes by through multitude of uh, business. So we are talking about a vision. And what's the difference between the literal dream and the dream that is a vision? I'll mention the differences. One, is that a vision okay let me descri describe a vision before we explain the differences a vision is when you catch a glimpse of God's purpose for your life and his divine plan for you in the future you catch a glimpse you have a picture you have an idea you receive what God's purpose for your life is and is planned for you in the future so it's similar to a dream but it's not a dream in that sense one why a dream as we described earlier is ambition driven it is what I want to achieve what I want for myself but a vision is divinely inspired that is the difference if that's the only thing you will note today I believe the deed is done you and I have a lot of dreams I wish in five years I'll be here or oh, when I'm 40 I'll be here when I'm 45 I'll be here when I leave school this is what I want to study this is a profession very very good it's not bad at all to have an ambition but as a child of God your ambition ends when you catch a glimpse of God's purpose for your life because you did not send yourself to the earth you didn't choose your family you didn't choose your parents if you chose your parents can you wave your hand you didn't choose your nationality if you prefer Niger U.S. to Nigeria, raise up your hand. You prefer U.S. to Nigeria. You better receive it. <laughs> but God brought you through your parents to Nigeria. So God has a purpose for your life. So a vision is when you catch a glimpse divinely of what that purpose is, for your life so a dream is ambition driven vision is divinely inspired one number two dream originates from man vision is god breathed we are saying the same thing using different words dream originates from you as man you are you conceived <laughs> the dream but vision is god breathed it's very difficult to know the difference between the two even for those who are 60 years old very very difficult next I'm talk, comparing the two a dream is decided but a vision is discovered 
saying same thing using different words you decide what you want to be through a dream but in a vision you discover it it's not your doing it is god just telling you my son my daughter this is my plan for you this is what i want you to pursue this is what i want you to achieve this is what i want you to be And it boils down to the fact that one little thread that distinguishes a dream in the literal sense from a vision is the motive. I want to become this. I want to become that. Why? Is God in the picture? Yeah, I'm 17 years old. I'm 20 years old. I'm 25 years old. Yes, when I'm 30, I would like to be this. When I'm 35, I would like to be this. Did God say that to you? And so that's what makes a difference. In this story, you will see that Joseph was minding his business when God started telling him what plans he has for him. So it was a vision. Yeah, we can call it a dream, but it was a vision. God letting him know you may be number 11, but you are destined for greatness. And I said to somebody here today, you may be the last born. You are destined for greatness. Amen. The Bible says, I know the thoughts that I think towards you. They are the thoughts of peace, not of evil, to bring you to an expected end, to give you a hope and a future. Your future is bright. Amen. Only you need to sit down and catch a glimpse. Don't catch the glimpse of your neighbor's life. Don't catch the glimpse of your friend's life. What does God have in mind for you? What on earth am I on earth for? So Joseph was minding his business. When God revealed to him, my son, this is my plan for you. Don't worry, you may be number 11 but you will be greater than your siblings. Even your father and your mother will come to bow before you. That's fearful. If the Lord will open the, your eyes, some of the things he will say to you will be fearful. I tell people, I said, if God, God has a good sense of humor, if he had told me, this is what I will be doing today, I would have run away. <laughs> but when we can't undo it yet, the Lord will not reveal it to you. I had other plans, very, very personal plans, laid it out, caught into years and seasons. But I'm grateful to God. He knows better. He knows what he can do. And he knows what he has in mind for you. So you will see those who, are, who accomplished it greatly for God in the Bible, both Old Testament and New Testament, had God inspired vision. Abraham was minding his business in Haram. Minding his business. And in Genesis chapter 12, God said to him, My son, come, leave your father's house. Leave your family. Leave your country. Where to? I will show you. Just follow me. That's a vision. God breathed. God changing the trajectory of his life. Was this successful or not? So my, pop, my question to you today is, have you obtained a vision of God's purpose for your life? Or you are just running a rat race. Everybody is doing this. I should, ah, ah, this is the next thing to do. Let's seek employment here. Let's do this course. Let's do this. Everybody is doing it. Let's do it. Let's do it. If a vision is divinely obtained, it will be divinely sustained. There are challenges in the economy. I will repeat that. If a vision is divinely obtained, it will be divinely sustained. I, I liken it to the parable told by Jesus when two houses were built, you remember? 
the two houses faced the same challenges. The Bible said rain fell, floods came, and dug under the two houses. The wind, storm came and blew the two houses. One stood, one fell. What made the difference? One was built on the word of God. One was built on the vision of God. The other was built on the vision of man. I want to do this. Everybody is doing it. I want to do that. So whatever the vicissitudes of life, if the Lord cost you to obtain that vision, it will enable you to sustain that vision. I remember this morning a beloved brother of mine, one of my first set of disciples 30 years ago, about 30 years ago, it will be 30 uh, next year. It will be maybe 18, 19 at that time. I had just done school sat and he was in the church and he was, was just trying to find his feet in life. And he joined my discipleship cell and we were meeting regularly. And I said, what do you want to do? He said, sir, God said to me, I've given you skill for audio to propagate the gospel. Audio, he was in the technical team, less than 20 years old. Young, slim man. We were in the same church for two years and I left, I left him there. Ask me where he is today. Because after that, he went to school, studied electrical, electronics, engineering, was used mightily in the church to raise the bar of uh, audio and uh, sound in the church. Today is all over the world. <laughs> Comes home six months, goes six months with audio, audio, audio. Not a lawyer, not a doctor, not an engineer, not a businessman, but skill that God told him from childhood. I'm giving you this skill for the propagation of my gospel. He's earning money in dollars through audio. So each time he comes to Nigeria, he, saw, he sees me, he has seen me early this year, and I, I cannot but marvel. His children are getting ready to go to, uh, to the university. Married, chicks, doing well. And I remember 30 years ago, he said, Sir, this is what the Lord said concerning me. Young boy, when a vision is obtained divinely, it will be sustained divinely. So how do you receive your vision? One way is a literal dream like we have just mentioned. The literal dream, that is you sleep and you dream, that is uh, uh, O level. Everybody does that. But let me warn you, that is very, very unsecured. It's an unsecured channel. It can be hacked. When you get to the airport or to an hotel and you are lodging, you access their Wi-Fi, they will warn you, this is an unsecured channel. If you like, open your bank account. Before you wake up in the morning, they will have taken money from your bank account. Unsecured channel. Uh, dreams, the literal dreams, and you and I are familiar with, they are not the best way God talks. It's Old Testament. We will see this in uh, Joseph because the Old Testament. Since Jesus came, the Holy Spirit came, God wants to talk to you not when you are asleep and unconscious, but when you are awake and conscious. He wants to speak with you like a man talk to his friends. So how can he speak to you apart from dreams? One is through divine desire. Divine desire. Philippians chapter 2 verse 13. Philippians chapter 2 verse 13 says, For it is God who works in you both to will and to do according to his good pleasure. So, yeah, you, I talked about dreams being man-originated. This one is a desire that is divinely orchestrated. 
it, it will not go. You sh shake it away, it will come back. Because you are born again, you have the Holy Spirit, you will start to know that, no, this is not just an idea. Um, this God telling me that this is what I want to be. I want you to be. Number three, I've told through dream, divine desire. Number three is divine revelation through the Holy Spirit. Divine revelation through the Holy Spirit. The Bible says in Romans chapter 8 verse 14. Romans 8 verse 14. As many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are sons of God. So God wants to lead you by the Holy Spirit. It's another topic entirely which will take a number of uh, days of series of teaching for us who may not be familiar with this to get this, that the Holy Spirit wants to speak with you like I'm talking to you. You don't have to sleep. My daughter, this is how I want you to be. It will start by saying, you know the way you spoke to your husband is wrong? Go and apologize. Little, little things like this. The way you rebuke your child is too sharp. You didn't ask what happened. Call your child and, and comfort him. Talks to you like that without sleeping. And until it gets to a, a serious matter like a vision of your life, will tell you, this is what I want for you. This is who I want you to marry. This is a course I want you to do. This is the university I want you to go. This is my plan for your life. This is where I want you to live divine revelation if you are a child of god expect to be led by the holy spirit as the bible says in romans 8 14 and lastly here we can't exhaust it is through divine placement We've talked about dream divine desire divine revelation divine placement divine placement this is a gray area that when god wants to communicate with you it takes you to a particular location we can see that in the Bible many times. When God was going to communicate with Moses uh, to come and be the deliverer, it was at the burning bush. He will get you to a place and will use that place to talk to you. Do you think it's by accident that Moses also was in Pharaoh's palace, raised in Pharaoh's palace, while he was serving as the apparent here, adopted child in the Pharaoh's palace, he was being groomed to be uh, the next Pharaoh the spirit of God will have been telling him you are coming to deliver my people from here can you imagine David when Saul had mental problem and he was brought to come and be playing keyboard for him <laughs> God will have taken him there and said you are the next king of Israel so sometimes God places you in some places and uses your location to give you a vision I remember a beloved brother of mine who was a businessman and he was always going to Dubai to buy things many years ago one day he went normal business trip and at the airport there God said to you you think I brought you here I've been bringing you here to come and make money. Huh? Can't you see people going to hell? You can't see them every day. They, they have not heard of my gospel. So I want you to come here to work for me. The man I'm talking to you about, God used through our church, New Covenant Church, to give us a branch in Dubai. We have two branches in Dubai today from Dubai, Dubai, we had an outpost to uh, India, from India to Kenya, and in East Africa we have about 10 churches, through that single man who was going to buy things he was, he was, he was just going to buy things, to do business and make money, and God said no I didn't bring you here only to make money, I want you to make disciples of all nations talking about vision God breathed. So my question to you, where is God in all your dreams? All your aspirations? Realizing your dream. It must be God breathed. Divinely inspired. God must have a 
part in it. It's not only for you to make money and enjoy. What is going to be God's part, God's benefit in what you have embarked upon? As many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Let's stand up to pray. Can you close your eyes and say, Dear Lord, open my eyes and let me know your plan and purpose for me so that I will run with your vision. Not just pursue my dreams, but run with your vision. You are great, yes, you are, Holy One. You walk upon the sea, you raise the dead. Bible about you is great. You are great and greatly to be praised. We just ask their Lord that we'll be partakers of that greatness. You made us fearfully and wonderfully with great plans, great purpose for us. Spirit of the Lord, we ask you will open our eyes and our hearts to be able to decipher what your vision for our life is. Help us to run with that vision. Help us to run with that vision. And please sustain our vision by your mighty hand. We give you praise and glory. We pray in Jesus' name. And the church of God shall say... Amen.